All right, welcome to our third and last segment of a uh, section of the toxic poison uh, <laughs> friction fire hack. Um, the jackass version, basically. Uh, so this last part is going to involve the material poison eye. And uh, if there's one that really uh, scares me, now I now I know that poison hemlock can be deadly, and uh, the Tura can really make you very sick and ill. But uh, even though poison ivy is probably the the least worry in a sense. I think it's the, the the suffering you go through <laughs> with the constant itching because I'm severely alert, uh, not allergic. I, I gotta, I'm, I I react uh, pretty easily to to poison ivy. In fact, I've been known to like look at it and I'll have poison ivy, which of course is an exaggeration. So what I have, and I'm gonna bring it. have here is a poison ivy vine and uh, I've had this in my garage it's over six feet tall and I've had this in my garage sitting in there seasoning left alone all by itself uh, since uh, Superstorm Sandy, and uh, just to give you an idea, today is uh, September twenty eighth, two thousand sixteen. That's how long. Uh, what, how I found this was uh, I was on a friend's property, and he had a tree down from Superstorm Sandy, and along with that tree, when it came down, was this poison ivy vine that was attached to the tree. And, uh, well, I just, I knew that someday I was going to do, attempt something as, as jackass as this, to, to ha not have another term for it. And, uh, so today is that day. So what I'm going to do with this is, uh, I'm not going to let this touch any of my machinery my bandsaw, my table saw, or anything like that. I'm gonna do this the old way. I'm going to take a knife to it, and we're gonna carve out uh, a bow drill. So we're gonna carve out a, a spindle and a hearth board, a baseboard, and we're gonna carve out a hand drill reload. And I'm going to try something that I have that is, I, is probably really not very smart. Um, I'm going to try a fire plow with this and see what happens. So, uh, um, as you can see, it's a, it's a hairy vine. It's covered with hairs. Uh, I have no idea what it's going to be like when I start cutting into this thing. I'm basically just going to use a, a knife and just go at it the old, the old way. I don't want to have to clean up and worry about all the things that, uh, all the dust that the bandsaw would make. It would be poison ivy dust with Urshal oil everywhere. Same with the table saw. I don't want all that stuff getting anywhere. So I'm just going to take this outside with a knife. And I'm just going to take my time and just carve the pieces like I, I've done for years, the old way. Uh, and uh, I want to, again, once again, remind everyone that uh, whatever you do, whatever you did, you own that. So, uh, the trick is to be safe. 
right on cue. The trick is to be safe and not do anything that's going to make you end up in the hospital. Or uh, you don't want to do anything illegal or anything that's going to get anybody hurt or killed, right? So, but, uh, so I'm going to say, don't try this at home. But, uh, Should probably take my own advice so we're gonna go outside and I'm gonna start carving and I'm gonna get a feel for this thing to see what it's like I'm gonna get rid of the sections that I know are no good like this really twisty section find straighter sections and uh, I'm both excited and horrified to figure out how this is gonna go all right so let's uh let's go let's see what happens So the first thing I'm going to do is examine what I've got here. Okay. I've got this end section that I hacked off the tree and it's split down here. So I'm going to start cutting it here at the split. However, it has a twisty portion here. It's very twisty here. So I'm going to move down this side and it seems to me the best section I can work with for a spindle is right here. So I'm going to cut this portion out. This section here is straight enough for a board and then I guess I'm going to find a piece later for the fire plow. I could pretty much take any section here and just carve out a handle plug. But I think I'm gonna take out here for the spindle, which I think is the straightest, and here for the board. So the first thing I'm gonna do is cut this section here up to here and uh, just work with this right now and then cut that in half. All right, so that's what I'm gonna do. Now I've I not only have gloves, latex, uh, nitrile gloves on, I've tripled them up. There's three on each hand. So just to be safe. Um, and I'm in an area where I'm just gonna collect everything right here on uh, some newspaper. And that way I can just fold everything up and the, the oil really doesn't basically, uh, with the chips, touch anything on the floor. All right, so let's keep going. All right, so <clears throat> uh, as with most people, uh, my experience with poison ivy uh, has to do from a gardening caretaking point of view where I'm basically pulling up vines. And uh, I noticed that when I when I pull those vines down like around the house or off trees and stuff like that, uh, they're very fragile. I mean, they just tear and break. And uh, in a way, that's kind of my uh, was my expected experience to be with this with this larger version of a vine. And it turns out that's not that's not the case. This is very very woody, like literally like a, a sapling. So I started to carve into it with a knife and I realized that this is like a piece of wood. <laughs> it's, it doesn't have that vine feel to it. Like, especially when I was carving, uh, I expected to kind of feel like an old grapevine kind of feel when I was carving grapevine. Uh, if you remember that, doing that with the bow drill back in, back in the day. So I literally had to hack my way through this vine to get out this section like hack and chop because the knife just trying to carve through it just it wasn't happening so i think one of the main things that um because of that is um when the tree fell and brought the whole thing down it was green 
and then I brought it inside. Now, when you do that with any piece of tree wood, when you cut it green and you bring it inside, it, bas it basically maintains its, its density and hardness. Um, so, really, it's my own fault for thinking that on some level it was going to be weak and maybe somewhat disintegrated because I had literally brought it in and let it sit there for years. So th this is basically going to be treated like a, like a piece of wood. So um, in rethinking the fire plow, I think this is going to be too hard to do fire plow with because the only way you can do fire plow is with really s soft woods or soft plants like um, by the way, velvet leaf, which I'll show you later. Um, so for right now, I think I'm just going to stick to bow drill. I think we're going to do bow drill. And while, after I've done bow drill, I'm going to rethink whether or not I'm doing hand drill. Because this is really hard. And you just, you don't do hand drill when, when the density is just too hard. Just, you just don't do that technique. You need other techniques. So we're gonna do, my other thinking too is just to increase the level of safety. Maybe I should just do it as a crutch drill and just keep myself away from the smoke even farther than possible. So if I'm gonna think along those lines, let's, uh, let's change bow drill to crutch drill just to remove myself physically away from the source of the smoke as much as possible and see how that goes. So I'm going to, out of this piece, which looks to be about a little over two feet, it's a little over two feet in length and it appears to be, because I'm not going to touch it. It's about two and a quarter, it's about, hold on, it's about two inches across, maybe a little less, less than two inches across in diameter. All right, so uh, I'm going to start getting this section here turned into a, uh, a spindle or, or a spindle reload for for a crutch drill, and we're going to turn this part here into a, a baseboard, a hearth somehow. All right, here we go. All right, so a couple things that I've decided and changed my mind on. Um, for the crutch drill, uh, I'm going to be using my uh, one and a quarter inch pine um, closet pole. Uh, crutch drill, which uses the hose hose clamp. Right. This was the uh, the uh, cedar plug that was in this one here. If you remember this one from back in the day, and uh, so I'm going to be designing a plug, much like this one, to fit for this uh, crutch drill. So that's one thing. Um, the other is, is I changed my mind on using the uh, bandsaw and uh, to cut these pieces. They're harder than, they're really hard. And the other thing I wanted, and I think it was worth it, was to get a good cross section of the, of the poison ivy. Because I really wanted to count the rings. I mean, this thing is like a tree. I mean, look at that. So how many rings are there? Well, let's find out. Uh, from the center, I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 10, 11, 12, 13. I think 14 rings. So this vine is at least 14 years old. <laughs> or it was when it was cut down. I mean, look at that. This thing is a tree, this vine practically these growth rings. Anyway, so uh, so I cut this section, right? I think it was something like this, anyway. 
I cut the ends off, right? This is a spare piece. Um, I got the end pieces here, right? Took them off. And uh, I got another good cross section here. This one's just a cross section. So this one, So I put this on the bandsaw, I took the sides off to make a hearth board, okay. It's pretty stable, it'll sit flat, and uh, this piece here, I'm going to do the, the plug out of this one here. As you can see, I got plenty of room to work with. Uh, the plug is an inch and a, a quarter in diameter, and I got about two inches to work with here, so I'm going to have plenty of room. So I'm going to start uh, shaping this down into a cylinder, and then I'm going to cut the sides off in order for it to fit inside, uh, like a uh, almost like a dovetail square, um, a square notch inside there to make it fit in the crutch drill and uh, see how that goes. And then we're gonna put it together, get it mated, and stand back and go. All right, let's give it a shot. Here we go. Okay, so here's what I've accomplished so far. This is the original cedar plug. Okay. And this is the new poison ivy plug made out of the vine. Fits pretty well. And uh, here's what I've done with the board. I put a, because I don't have a one and a quarter inch Forstner bit. I have a one and three eighths and I have a one inch. So I did both and then what I did was I rounded the tip down here on the reload down to one inch so that'll fit inside the one inch socket and sit inside the one and three eighths which of course is bigger than one and a quarter. So this uh, reload measures um, let's see, that's one and eighth and it's bigger than one and th three eighths I mean it's bigger than one and it's less than one and a quarter it's just under one and a quarter so it's it's more than one and one eighth but it's less than one and a quarter so, and that should fit in there pretty well. So what I'm gonna do right now, what you're gonna watch is me doing uh, the mating process. You know what I think I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna put the notch in there and we're just gonna go for it. So I'm gonna cut this notch and we're just gonna go for it. You know what, that's what we're gonna do, okay? I'm not gonna bother mating at first, all right? Come on, man.
So I've sliced the notch, but it hasn't come out. So I need to pry that out of there carefully without killing myself. As you know, I like a square end on my notches. I don't do an exact triangle. I don't like the sharp tip. A triangle. And I do my notch. Yes, I'm going to wash my knife when this is done. Correct. I shouldn't. You're not supposed to pry like that with a knife. You break the tip off. So there we go. See that? The screwdriver has many uses. All right. So there's our notch. And what we're going to do is we're just going to go for it. Okay. So I'm going to go outside where there's a good breeze going right now, and we're just going to do it. Okay. So we're working with two cameras, all right? I got one that shows uh, a close-up here of the notch, so you can see it fill up and hopefully ignite. And Jake over here is holding my phone, which is going to show my technique simultaneously. And uh, so I have my old oak um, stairway banister. Uh, uh, crutch brace, pressure crutch brace, and here I have, like I said before, I have my uh, one and a quarter inch uh, uh, crutch drill spindle, uh, reloading spindle, which is a closet pole, it's pine, and I'm using my hickory uh, Egyptian style bow, of course, to turn this because we're going to need a lot of pressure. This, this uh, the poison ivy vine is really, really hard. It was really hard to, to uh, carve down. There's a lot of bugs out here, sorry. And uh, so I think that um, the bow drill would have been very, very difficult to begin with. So I'm glad I changed over to crutch drill anyway because I, I think I'm gonna need a lot of pressure in order to do this. So I got a lot of gnats swarming around my head at the moment so here we go so we're gonna at the same time we're going to mate it warm it up mate it and uh, hopefully ignite it all at once all right so let's start playing that cello here okay jake's gonna do his best to avoid any kind of smoke so we can see the notch is starting to fill. I can see it in my other camera. The bow's doing a pretty good of maintaining uh, its grip, and turning the spindle. I'm gonna stop for a second and have a look. And we have a coal. This is a poison ivy vine coal. 
Look at that. Pretty awesome. All right, so we got extinguished there, so the smoke is not a hazard. And uh, there we go. It can be done. All right.